presence of one of our nieces here. Amen. Yeah. Chanel, will you just wave? Amen. 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 This is from the Gospel Fellowship Church in Richmond, California. Dr. Phil Ellenberg is her pastor. Amen. And I had the pleasure of him as a student when he was in junior high. That's when I was. Amen. He is doing a wonderful work there in the city of Richmond, yeah. California. Uh, and we're just glad to have her here with Johnson this weekend. Amen. 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 And I got a lot of nieces and nephews. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is here with us and we're certainly glad to have yeah. you yeah. share it with us. I want to look at a passage I just preached a few weeks ago. Same passage, different sermon. Amen. Amen. John 10 and 10. Yeah. John 10 and 10. I preached one wing of it last time. I'm going to preach the other wing this time. John 10 and 10. <clears throat> John 10 and 10. What was it again, Pastor? John 10 and 10. <laughs> In the New Testament. If you're in 1 John, you're too far back. If you're in Jonah, you ain't come up far enough. John 10 and 10. <clears throat> so the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Yes, sir. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. This time, I want to talk about the destructive devices of the devil. All right. The destructive devices of the devil. I want to acknowledge the deacons and the preachers. And the also pray for Reverend Tate. He's on assignment today preaching somewhere. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing when other pastors call and want your associates to share with them. Amen. And our sons here have been around the state. Amen. 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 It's a blessing. So pray for him Amen. as well. And then to all of you, my other family, good to see you again. Amen. The destructive devices of the devil. Work it. Work it. For those of us familiar with the Gospel of John, uh, we recognize that by the time of the text, we recognize Jesus had an unusual encounter with a blind man in the, in the ninth chapter. It kind of leads up to our text. As a matter of fact, verse 1, chapter 9 said he was born blind. Never been able to see the blueness of the sea. Never been able to see the sunrise. Never been able to see the redness in the rose. The word says that he was born blind. But not only was he born blind, he's got a dual dilemma. He has a, a twin trouble problem. But verse 6 says that he's a beggar. Well, well. That's one thing not to be able to see. But it's another thing to have to depend on the liberality of people to help get you around from day to day. There are those that will help you as long as they think it's necessary. The sooner they decide that they have given everything to your cause and your case, they'll leave you all along the way. But thank God today that the man encounters Christ. And I want to tell you, Christ does make a difference. Now, the disciples desire to turn this man's condition and his case into a, into a theological discussion and debate and dialogue. They raise the question, who sinned? Mm -hmm. This man or his parents that he might be yeah. born blind. Mm -hmm. And it's Jesus the Christ who says neither. Right, but this has happened so that the work of God might be made visible. Well, the word is made manifest. And I'm grateful to report to me that some stuff that happened to you sometime really ain't for you. Yeah, right. It's so that other people can see God bring you through whatever it is that you're going through. And there's somebody here today that's battling with why am I going through what I'm going through. I don't know. I'm just going to tell you, I'm preaching this to me. 
said them. for you, it might be for somebody else as they watch you go through what you love. You see God bring you out, bring you on, bring you over, bring you under, and then bring you back around. And then here Jesus said he, he's not blind because of anything his parents have done or what he's done. I, I see the parents perhaps having some problems and some predicaments maybe. Uh, but, but how could he sin before he was even born? Yeah. Yeah. And it was in that day that they believed that a baby could sin while in their mother's womb. Right. But thank God that Jesus Christ goes on record and says, neither he nor his parents. Yeah. Jesus never leaves you like he finds you. Yeah. Finds a blind beggar. But the word said he spits on the ground, he anoints the man's eyes, and tells him to go walk in the pool. The word said that he came to see. And somebody said that uh, there's a strange mixture of dirt at the bed. Jesus spits on the ground and the dirt and mixes up the clay and the mud and rubs it on the ground. And as a result of this, it caused great difficulty and despair among the religious leaders. The word said they began to dialogue among themselves about how this man received his sight. And, and because he would not deny or denounce that it was Jesus that gave him his sight, they caused an intense problem for his friends as well as his family. His neighbors began to argue that maybe this ain't him. Maybe this is another fellow. But, but the man stands up and says with crystal clarity, no, I'm the one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I think the old hymn would fit in right here where it says, I once was blind, yeah. but now I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's because of this that the religious leader denounced that Jesus Christ had healed the man, and they put the man out of church. Well, and as a result, Jesus has to find this man. And, and what do you do when they put you out of church? You just find what's best. Jesus. So behind this, Jesus tells this parable, and the text says that he tells this parable about sheep and shepherds. Now, the background of this finds its history in Ezekiel 34. And then you're familiar with the 100th Psalm, where it says that we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If David could have been here today, he'd have said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Making me lie down and breathe. Right, right, right. uh, there's three times where sheep won't lay down. First of all, if there's famine, if there's fear, or if there are flies or nasal parasites. And there are three times they won't lay down, but David said that the Lord been so good to me. Okay. He removed all of the pestering parasites from my predicament. And as a result, I can just lay down. There's somebody here today that ought to believe that the Lord is my shepherd. And I'll have everything I need because I got the right shepherd. Zach, you're going to be with us today, okay? All right, all right, okay, all right. Uh, the story is told of two sheep who were talking one day, and one of them said to the other, Things aren't going good for me. I I'm weak, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm cold. My world is all mangled up. Look at me. I'm just a mess. Uh, I, I can even hardly breathe because the flies and the maggots have my nasal passages all blocked. The other sheep lifted his head and said, well, I'm doing all right. I've been eating good. Uh, look at my world. It's the best in town. <laughs> my head and nose are clean. I can breathe because my shepherd anoints my head. And, and, and keeps my nose clean with his oil. Uh, I just got one suggestion for you. Maybe you ought to change shepherds. And I need to tell somebody here, if things aren't going well in your life, maybe you need to change shepherds. If you have parasites that are festering you and yeah. flies that are frustrating you, maybe you ought to change up. Yeah. If you keep running into a brick wall 
You need to change shepherds. If you keep losing the battle to sin, uh, I declare that maybe you're following the wrong shepherd. Because I declare my shepherd's all right with me. That's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. My shepherd takes care of everything I need. My shepherd wakes me in the morning. My shepherd puts food on my table. Right. My shepherd opens doors for me when there are others yes. are closed in my face. Yes. My shepherd collects my tears when I cry and puts them in the box. Yes. My, my shepherd gives me joy because the Lord yes. is my shepherd. Yes. So Jesus Christ utters this parable. He says, first of all, I am the door. Yes. Not a door, but the door. Yes. Where it is what's called subject matter. G Jesus says, but not only am I the door uh -huh. which provides the entrance for the sheep, but I am the good shepherd. Amen. I stand head and shoulders above all the rest. All right. And then he says, you've got to watch out for a couple of things. Even though he is our good shepherd, you've got to watch out, first of all, for hirelings. Mm -hmm. Hiring, that's hired help. Yeah. You've got to watch out for wolves. Uh -huh. uh, they like to run in packs. Yeah. Wolves collect company. Yeah. and are cliquish. Yeah. Uh, in this case, it was just one wolf. And one wolf can do major damage to a flock of sheep. But then you've got to also watch out for shepherds who, who don't have the best interest of the sheep. In them. And then you got to watch out for thieves. we got to understand this is not a thief, but the thief. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again, subject matter. Uh, I know Mr. Munger would be happy with me, Tommy, if she yeah. knew I was dealing with yeah. subject matter. <laughs> we learned that in the first grade. <laughs> so we're talking about a specific thing. Yeah. And Miss Munger used to hit you on the head. Yeah. Did something wrong, she put one hand on top of it and started pounding. Yeah. We was getting it. Amen. <laughs> and, and so I want to talk about this a little bit. Uh, I believe on a higher note, the text is talking about how Satan himself has come yes. to do three things. Yes. That's why we got to be watchful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, yes, sir. the devil, the Jesus thief, comes to steal, yes. kill, yes. and to destroy. Yes, yes, he doesn't just come to kill. Yes. He doesn't just come to steal, but he comes to destroy. Yes, These are three different demonic, devilish devices right. that he does to damage and destroy. Yes. First of all, he comes to steal. That's his main objective. The Greek word klepto, where we get our English word kleptomaniac from, he just steal to be scared. Like I mentioned the other week about family reunions and family members who don't participate in the $20 fee for the meat. And they take home more food than they serve. And sometimes they steal it. Because they're trying to pass it along, talking about that's for that's for Junebug's grandma <laughs> and, and Ray Ray's aunt, yeah. and it's all going to their car. Yeah. <laughs> it's still. Yes, now there's some people that don't have to steal. Yeah. And once in a while you read about a movie star in Hollywood that gets picked up for shoplifting. Yeah. They don't have to steal, but they just steal. He right. steal. Yeah. And that's what Satan does. He comes with. The devilish device to steal. And if you don't watch it, he'll steal your joy. Somehow I don't know about that. You had a joyous disposition. Somehow you allow Satan to get a hold of your joy. He'll steal your happiness. He'll steal your relationship with other people. He'll steal your relationship with church. One Sunday turns into two. Two turns into four. Four turns into eight. The next thing you know, you're out of fellowship with the same. Because you yeah. allowed him to multiply your misery yeah. through satanic death. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll steal everything you have if you don't watch it. He'll, he'll steal your life. Yeah. So maybe it's a good time to ask, what has he stolen from you? Yeah. Have you checked around lately to see what's missing? Yeah. Have you looked and seen whether or not you have peace? Yeah. Have you checked out where you last put your joy? Yeah. And is it still there or has he stolen your joy? Yeah. You gotta watch your children because he'll steal them from you too. Yes, yes, you see your children and hear them say something, ask yourself, well, where in the world did that come from? If you don't keep close enough to them, 
He'll divide them from you and scatter them away from you uh -huh. with the aim of slaughtering them. Yeah. I tell you, he wants to steal them. Yes. And, and literally, uh, that that he doesn't steal from you, he'll cause you to secondly sacrifice it. Uh -huh. Let me give an example. Okay. You can't get mad. Uh -huh. Ain't nobody home when you've been home. Because you didn't go home when you should have been home. And you had somebody's house you had no business being at. So by the time you got home, you find yourself all alone. You sacrificed that. Now don't get mad because your feet hurt. You danced a night away when you were young, and now you have palaces and corn. You, 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 you sacrificed some good feet. Don't get mad because your health is bad. You didn't eat well when you were younger. You the one that sacrificed that. Don't get mad because you're broke today. You use the Lord's tithe and offering to spend all your money at the mall. You sacrificed that. And don't get mad if your liver is bad. You drink all your life. You sacrifice that because Satan will cause you to sacrifice that which he doesn't steal. I wish to God more people would be honest in church and go on and admit that they sacrificed some stuff. Yeah. Go, on, go ahead and admit I've sacrificed some things. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I'm in the condition I'm in. Yeah. Don't blame it on God. Yeah. Don't blame it on the church. Yeah. Because some folk get mad at the church. Yeah. Get mad at the pastor and the Lord when you won't turn the mirror of the word on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Go on and testify. You sacrifice a whole lot of stuff for nothing. Ain't no sense in getting mad at anybody else. Yeah. Admit it that you sacrificed them. Yeah. Some have lost their home because they gambled at the gambling boat too long. Yeah. Satan come to kill, steal, and destroy. What has he made to sacrifice? What plan, project, proposal, or person has he made to sacrifice? You know, he's always fighting what's good and what has God's name on it. That's one of the reasons he come to church. He's fighting what God has his name on. Oh yeah, he's at the club. He's at the juke joints. He's at the bars, but he also is at church. And, and he come because some folk brought him with him. He know the word, but he always leaves a word out from the word. Like somebody telling you money is the root of all evil. No, don't let Satan fool you. It is the love of money. That's the root of all. One missed word can destroy the whole thing. He comes to steal, to kill, and then there's that word destroy. And for the purpose of alliteration, we'll use the word spark. After all, we are talking about sheep. What in the world has he destroyed in your life? And your labor. Well, what has he taken from you? What has he destroyed literally with you looking at it taking place? Uh -huh. Somebody says he destroyed my home. Yeah. Somebody said I have to admit he destroyed my body. Well, well. Somebody else may say he destroyed my children. Some will have to admit he destroyed my church. Yeah. You need to watch it because the ultimate aim of Satan is not to play yeah. with you, but to destroy you. Yeah. Yeah. We have a few people say, well, you know, Satan ain't bothering me. Yeah. And the reality is, if he's not bothering you, then more than likely he already got it. <laughs> That's something you don't want to brag about, talking about all the devil ain't bothering me. <laughs> I wouldn't even, don't even say that. Somebody here today can testify he's messing with me. Trying to destroy me. Constantly trying to disrupt my life. Yeah. A couple years ago, he came for me in an unusual way. Mm. Yeah. He came to destroy me. Yeah. Joe couldn't be here today to say something to a certain person, but if he could, he'd say, he'll come after your wealth, yeah. and he'll come after your health. Yeah. If he can't destroy your children, he'll mess with your companion. Yeah. Yeah. If he can't destroy your faith, he'll mess with your future and your yeah. finances. Yeah. But he's always trying to destroy something. And every now and then, you've got to literally stand in the power of the Holy Spirit and let him fight your life. The Holy Spirit will help us identify him as he drives up. And the reality, there are too many people blaming God for what Satan is behind. They're too carnal to identify the true culprit. 
Yeah. I don't want to give him too much credit, but we have to say he is real. Yeah. There are those who say we don't need to talk about Satan, but, but he is real. Yes. If you don't believe me, yes. go to work. He'll show up on you, John. Yes. Go to church and he'll meet you after yes. Go to school and he's right there by your yes. house or in your dorm. Yes. Go downtown and he's already there. Yes. And when you get back to the house, he's right there in the living room. Yes. I tell you, he's all over the place. Yes. Now he's too lazy to walk yes. anywhere. Yes. So when he shows up, he's got a ride with somebody. Yes. I don't know where about the second back the Starlight Band days. Yes. You yes. say, don't let the devil ride. Yes. If you let him ride, he'll want to drive. Don't let him be your boss. If he's your boss, he'll make your soul be. Don't let the devil ride. Y'all remember that song, Star Light Man? Don't make me feel alone now. That's back in the <laughs> So we ought to ask ourselves, did, did I bring him with me today? Because he's here. He's here today with some critical spirit. Why are they doing this? Yes. Why are they doing that? Yes. How come they doing it that way? I remember a long time ago they used to do it this way. Yes. Why are they singing this? Yes. What are they going to do with the money? Who yes. takes the money to the yes. bank? Yes. Thomas went on his way to the bank the other day. He turned left on 12th Street yes. and went down another way and had the church money bag with him. Where is he going? Yes. And you know what? One of the disciples' name was Thomas. That was a doubting Thomas. He's always trying to use his destructive device to divide the body and maintain dissension among them. And sadly, there are too many today who are cooperating with his agenda. Well, we've looked at the fact that he comes to steal, and the fact that he makes you sacrifice or kill something. And then we've seen how he seeks to slaughter or destroy. And all of these things are what he comes to do. Yeah. But finally, you want to look at Jesus or the Savior and what he wants to do. Well, he says, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. When we see the, the statement, I am, I am, that ought to bring excitement to us. That's right. yeah. yes, if you know the significance of the words, I am, I am. Yeah. then you realize that it's the same kind of language that God uses. That's right. You remember the third chapter of Exodus when Moses asked God, what do I tell the people? And who do I say sent me? God said, then tell them I am sent you. And, and whatever they need, I am that I am. I am. I am is holy talk. I am is the divine ID card of God. Yeah. Uh, if you ever tell God, let me see your ID. You see, I am on the ID. Yeah. Uh, and whatever we need is wrapped up in the sufficiency of the I amness of God. Yeah. So the text says, I am come that you might have life. And as we said on previous occasions, whatever we need is wrapped up in his I amness. My good friend, yeah. said that whatever we need it is wrapped up in the sufficiency yeah. of the I amness of God. Yeah. If we need a way, he just reaches within himself and takes out a way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If we need water, he, he reaches within himself and takes out water and says, I am the water of life. Yeah. If we need a door, he just reaches within himself and takes out a door and says, I am the door. Yeah. Or if we need light, he reaches in himself and salvation, so he reached within himself and worked it out. Found within himself a son. Took himself out of himself in the form of a son. And though he thought it not right to be equal with God, he took upon himself the form of a servant and humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. And he reaches in and takes out the son and says, for God so does the earth. And in his I am this, he known by his doctrine and his deeds. Oh, yeah. He known by his word and yeah. his works. He 
be known by his proclamation and his power. Yes. In his I amness, he's known by his message and his might. Yes. His goodness and his grace. Yes. But most of all, as the Savior who yes. sacrificed. Yes. He died one Friday yes. on Calvary's mountain. Yes. He hung, bled, and died. Yes. On Friday, in order to give us life, he had to give his life. Yes. So he died in our behalf. Yeah. But that's not how the story ends. Three days yeah. to go over again. He is the risen Savior. Yeah. And as the risen Savior, he can heal your body. Yeah. As the risen Savior, he can renew your strength. Yeah. As the risen Savior, he can restore yeah. your soul. Yeah. He can regulate your mind and unburden your heart. Yeah. And he can make the devil leave you alone. Yeah. I serve a risen Savior. Yeah. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, I tell you. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And because he lives, I have access to him. Because I came to Jesus. Just as I was. Weary, worn, and sad. Yeah. Found in him a resting place. Yeah. Now he made me glad. He lives. Yeah. Christ Jesus yeah. lives today. Yeah. He walks with me. He talks with me alone. Like yeah. our way. He lives. Yeah. He lives. Salvation to him, Paul. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. God. Show 